Good afternoon. My name is Oliver Westmoreland. I am uh, an ISC Registered Level 3 Advisor and I'm a consultant with GSN Immigration. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so you can continue to watch our extremely interesting videos about UK visa and immigration advice. Today's topic, I must warn you in advance, is quite complicated. We're going to be talking about in-country visa applications being refused, in-country visa applications being rejected, and we're going to talk about the associated overstaying rules. I'm going to explain this bit by bit. You, you, you a migrant, submits an in-country application. This, this is an application that's made in the UK. You're already in the UK. You probably have leave in some category. Um, you make an application to extend your leave or you make an application to switch your leave to a different category. Now, of course, if everything goes well, the application is successful and everyone's happy. If things don't go well, the application might be refused because it didn't meet quite all the requirements of the immigration rules. Um, maybe there wasn't enough money on the bank on a certain day. Maybe the documents submitted in evidence were not adequate, something like that. The application is refused. If that happens, there will be a right of challenge, either by administrative review or appeal to a first tier tribunal. And the uh, challenge might be successful or not, but at least you have a way forward. If a visa application is rejected, this is something a bit different. Let's say, for example, that you, the migrant, don't hold the correct type of leave to apply for what you're applying for. Switching rules are quite complicated. Some switches are allowed, other switches are not allowed. So if you have the wrong leave and you didn't have the assistance of a, a really great lawyer, or maybe you have the assistance of a really bad lawyer and you made an impossible application, uh, you have the wrong kind of leave to switch to what you wanted to switch to, that application will be not refused, but rejected. Rejected means the Home Office just don't really bother to look at the application. They say, no, no, this person's got the wrong leave. Uh, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna study the application in any depth or detail. Uh, it's rejected, sorry. Another example, I don't think it happens as much nowadays as it did, but it could happen, I suppose. Um, a mandatory document is not submitted with an application. Now, in the old days, uh, things were submitted by post. It's probably not quite so easy to do that these days, but it could happen, I suppose. Something could go wrong with the online submission. A mandatory document could not be submitted. If the Home Office were nasty and awkward, which they might be, again, they might reject the application because the application, there was something so wrong with it that they couldn't even begin to consider it. They didn't even want to consider it. That's the difference between refusal and rejection. Historically, um, rejection was much worse than refusal. Historically, if your application was rejected, um, very, very likely you were going to become an overstayer, very possible. Uh, let's say your visa expired on uh, 15th of August. Let's say you submitted your new visa application on the 5th of August. So you were well in time, you weren't late or anything. And so you thought to yourself, um, if you were a lawyer or quite technical, you think, I'm going to get Section 3C leave when my visa expires. And what this means is something fairly simple. If you submit your visa application in time, and then shortly after the visa expires, you do not become an overstayer. Section 3C of the Immigration Act 1971, it protects your status. It keeps your status for however long it takes. If the Home Office takes six months to um, process the application, uh, your status is protected, your status remains for that whole period, and you can do whatever you could do with that visa. You are protected by Section 3C leave if your visa, your new visa application was made in time. And so you probably think you're all right, don't you? If you submit your visa application in time, you think this all, I'm gonna be fine. When my visa expires, I'm going to be fine. Uh, my leave is going to be protected by Section 3C. Suppose it's rejected. It doesn't necessarily happen. It could happen. In fact, very likely, I should think. 
Home Office are going to say um, your visa application is rejected. Your visa expired on 15th of August. I'm afraid to say you're now an overstayer and you must leave the UK. Now, that <laughs> very unfortunate situation uh, if that happened. Previously, this could be a real, really bad problem. Now, let me bring in the overstaying rules. This is where it gets more complicated, I would say, perhaps. Um, if you had an application, under the old rules, if you had an application refused, um, let's say you didn't want to challenge it for whatever reason. Let's say you just left it and left it for a while. Um, let's say the deadline to challenge the refusal decision had gone. You then had a 14 day window to make a fresh application. This is for people who've been refused. And the rule's quite um, generous. Actually, the rule is even more generous than that. Uh, let's say you, you um, let's take another scenario. Let's say you do challenge and the challenge is ultimately unsuccessful. You still get another bite at the cherry. After the um, unsuccessful appeal has happened, you have another 14 day window to make a fresh application. Now, if it's a good application, if it looks all right, the Home Office will accept it and they will make the decision that they make. It, it wasn't so difficult and complicated. The rule is actually very generous. It gives different 14 day windows, different bites of the cherry. But this was for people whose applications have been refused. Under the old rules, the old scheme, if the application was rejected, um, it wasn't at all sure that you would have these 14 day windows. It looked as though um, you were just an overstayer and that was it, no way out. Some case law happened in the Court of Appeal some while ago and the Court of Appeal said that someone whose visa application has been rejected has the same or should have the same rights as someone whose visa application was refused. They get this same 14 day window scheme and Soon after this happened in the Court of Appeal, the Home Office changed the word, just a couple of little words in the immigration rules. Uh, it says, it used to say, if your application is refused, then so and so and so and so, 14 day window, 14 day window, blah, blah. Change it to, if the application is refused or rejected, then blah, 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 14 day window, 14 day window. So um, the good news is, extremely good news for some people, uh, if you find that your visa application, your in-country, this is not about interclearance, your in-country leave to remain application is uh, refused or rejected, you have a chance to submit a fresh application uh, within a 14 day window. So you still got um, a chance. Now, of course, if, if that application is unsuccessful, well, they'd be in big trouble, but the application might be successful. Now, I'm, I'm aware this is a very complex topic um, and it's coming at you probably for the first time. I'm sure that Mr. Shah will have some questions to try and um, unpick this thing. Yes, please. Thank you so much for diving into this complicated matter. Um, and it will definitely be useful for a lot of um, people out there. I would like to ask um, if an entry clearance application for the UK is rejected as invalid, can this um, rejection have a negative impact on the future valid applications of the applicant? No. Fantastic. Um, and um, another question I would like to ask is, um, if you can give us some examples of what can cause a rejected application. I think the two examples I gave are the most frequent, or certainly they were. You have the wrong type of leave. Um, you don't submit something with the application that is mandatory. Somehow you forget to um, provide your biometrics. That, that could be another good reason. Okay, great. So someone needs to be careful and mindful of these. Well, I mean, it's not as bad as it was because if the application was rejected, it was, it was fatal. But I still think you need to be careful because if you, if you don't submit something that you need to, um, it's possible that the Home Office might write to you and ask for it, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, you could still have a, a difficult life uh, if an application is rejected. Um, you know, it's best to 
well, A, be very careful, or B, instruct a lawyer who's very careful. A, a very small mistake can have a very large impact. Sure. Um, let's assume someone overstayed in the UK on some sort of visa, and then they left the UK to make an entry clearance application. This could be, for example, um, somebody who might, may have been in the UK on um, work visa, and left the UK after overstaying that visa, they now may be married to a British citizen and want to make an application for entry clearance under family visa category. Is there any cooling off period that they need to make before this? Mm. Um, not, not in the um, example that you just described. Um, family applications are made under a part of the immigration rules called Appendix FM, Appendix Family Members. Uh, you don't get punished for previous historical overstaying if you apply under Appendix FM. However, if you were applying for another work visa, you would be punished. If there was substantial historical overstaying, uh, you'd have a 12-month ban before you could make a successful application to come back to the UK. You get different rules for different categories. Great. It's best to um, look into the type of visa one is applying and yes. see if that will apply. Well, to be absolutely honest, um, Unless you're very clever and you, you know you've got some sort of uh, adverse problem, adverse history, it's really a good idea. I would say instruct a lawyer who can understand the grounds for refusal rules because they are quite like everything in this field. They are quite complex. Uh, unless you're extremely clever, I wouldn't necessarily try and do it yourself as a layperson. I've been struggling with these rules for years, and and, and they are quite difficult. I, I would say that the complexity is such that. Unless you're really in the flow of that way of thinking and writing, it's difficult to understand the principles. I know various clients who think that they've got legal knowledge, maybe from some other field, or um, I had a client once who was a trainee solicitor, uh, and they think, oh yeah, I can do it, it's all right. These rules, they are more difficult than they look at first glance. You can easily get it wrong. You might end up making a visa application, which is always going to fail, you know, which is doomed to failure. Uh, if, if that is the case, you want your good lawyer to tell you, you know, this visa application is doomed to failure, you know, don't do it. Sure, definitely. I agree. And um, I would like to give you another example to elaborate to, to viewers um, to understand this, this matter in a bit more detail. Let's um, assume if a student makes an application for a graduate visa within the UK hmm. and um, this application has been rejected as invalid, can they continue to work as per the last vi the student visa conditions? Uh, good question. I'm afraid not. Um, when that happens, when the application is rejected, you become an overstayer. Overstay is not supposed to work. Overstay is not allowed to work. Now, what happens in practice may be different, but that's what the law says. Okay, brilliant. Um, thank but it's you not so that brilliant for the person, but um, that's the way it is. Exactly. Um, it's best to take advice, I guess, in yes. this scenario, and yeah. be mindful of the rules. Yes. And do not break any further rules. Yes. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much for your today's vlog, and oh. we'll see you in the next one. See you next time. Thank you so much.